It's beginning. I don't get excited about stuff very often, but this is something that I'm really excited about. I'm pumped. I can't wait to see what this mission has for us. Here's the beginning. Chili, do you really think we should do this, man? Brett, do you really think we should do this, man? Well, I've got good news. They float. That's a big step in the right direction. Bye, girls. Here we go, boys. She's sucking us in. So the Altima Hall River is 137 miles. It's only crossed by roads four times, I think. Four times the whole uh, the whole course of the river. It's undammed all the way to the coast. And uh, we're going to take this baby all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. What an opportunity, man. What an adventure that we're about to have. Feeling blessed today. All right, guys, we're coming up on the headwaters of the Altima Hall River. So we're, we put in on the Oconee, and now we paddled the Oconee to the terminus where it flows into the Altima Hall. And there she is. Here's the fork in the river. There's the Altima Hall, Brett, Chili. For you guys that don't know, this is the start of a 137 mile long unsupported paddle that me, uh, Brett, and Chili are embarking on. So we'll keep you updated along the way. This is the start. Here she is. What are you talking about this, Chili? First lunch. We ain't caught a darn fish. I ain't even had a darn bite, son. I'm just glad we brought food or we'd be some hungry mugs this evening. I mean, that's what you gotta live with when you're freaking sorry and you can't catch a fish. We'll keep, we'll keep trying. So we're at day one. This is day one. We're at 9.32 miles into our paddle. And uh, it's absolutely stunning. Beautiful. It's dead silent. Been hearing owls, seen some osprey. We got a pretty good flow here in the river, but there's some long stretches where the current slacks up the river in places gets really wide and when it gets wide the current slows down um, which makes us move quite a bit slower so we've been at it now for four hours and four minutes 9.36 miles I'm just so satisfied with the peace that is in this place man uh, that just that it's so remote even now and it will only get more so as we move down river this is not going to be a walk in the park, man, to take this all the way to the Atlantic. It's not going to be easy. Um, miles out here come slow. Well, it's already starting. We knew the rain was coming today, so here it is. <sighs> Pretty amazing to be out here and uh, not be able to get out of this. This is part of doing missions like this. So we got the gear. We're pretty much wet anyways. And uh, so you don't stop when this happens. We got camp tonight. I'm 
Man, that's beautiful. Brett, how was your first day paddling, bro? It was real good. Real good until I broke my fishing pole on that big old bass I hooked. Brett got a world record today. <laughs> Fastest man to break a fishing pole on the Altima Hall. It happened. How about you, Chili? How was your first day on the water? I started off paddling real slow and about four hours in, man, I hit my stride. Oh, you hit your stride, son. Oh, I hit my stride. There ain't no doubt about it. I couldn't hardly keep up with you. Ain't this freaking beautiful, man? It's something, isn't it? Unbelievable. Just think you tried to talk me out of going. I'll help you, Chili. All right, guys, we gotta get to work. I'll update you when we get camp set up. Look at this cat. Look at this joker. Welcome to our camp this morning. We really couldn't ask for a better morning. It's not raining, everything dried out. And we're right here on the, the water. And Chili's washing dishes. That's about how it's supposed to be, isn't it? Good job, Chili. I cooked. I usually wash dishes. I cook, so that's why Chili's washing dishes. All right, we're departing campsite one. Headed out for day two. Campsite one was awesome. It was on the uh, nice high bank on that sandbar right there. Beautiful bend in the river. Gonna be hard to beat that. Good breakfast this morning, bacon and eggs and blueberry bagel. Hard to beat, son. Man been eating them Jolly Ranchers, son. Gotta get you. I got a whole pack of them. Well, I had a, I got a whole extra one of these tackle boxes, and I don't know why I didn't just fill it up with candy like that. Here. Oh, yep. I guarantee you they're in here. Man, it's some big cypress right there. Yep. Go on back there and see if you can get some good footage of something. First fish on the Altima Hall. These boys ain't got nothing on me, son. On the old beetle spin. There he is. Hit it hard. Chili, do you want this bass? Look at that, boys. I mean, he slammed that beetle spin, son. Joker, slam that beetle spin. I got my beard hung up in my fishing reel so bad I couldn't even enjoy catching the fish. I might have to braid this beard. Although we brought food, it would be nice to get to a point out here on the river where you were pretty good enough that you were pretty confident you could feed yourself. We are nowhere near that point but one fish is a good sign i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all the old bull will provide i've done caught the only fish out here on the river chili's been about to starve to death and uh i caught him a bass about an hour or so ago so he'd be gnawing on some fish bones later on this evening i'll try to get him on camera he's struggling me and brett are doing good chili's really struggling to find his groove look at him over there look at him 
But uh, we're gonna keep coaching him through it, guys. Let me see what you got here, man. I mean, look at that monster. Darn, you, okay, you got a little bluegill, son. Yeah. Look at that. Little shell cracker. Oh, head far. I done picked that darn line up. You got it. Gosh, dog. You know what, man? Somebody ought to have to come down through here and clean all these stinking lines. It's stupid, man. Well, you can tell they, they don't watch over them. No. Chili has turned into a river turtle. I'm friggin' ticked off. What's going on? That was stupid. What'd you do? Acting like an idiot. What'd you do, man? I'm an idiot. Did you lose anything? I don't know. That's another reason why it's a problem. Because you can lose stuff. You don't know if anything come out? Oh, everything came out, but I grabbed it all. Did you lose your cooler and all? Chili has flipped his boat over. Now he's in the bushes. We don't know if he has everything or uh Good gosh. Or what? But he's good and wet. What the look at that. Uh he got a praying man that's on his hat, son. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if y'all can see that, but we're coming up on our third road crossing. 21.94 <clears throat> 1 miles on day two. Been on the water for eight hours and 13 minutes. I think Chili and Brad are pretty well beat. Oh, the old bull is paddling strong, son. Uh, oh at, at 20 miles, at 20 miles where we were supposed to camp, we came across a Dab Blum neighborhood. And now, here we have a highway. And, uh, yeah, luckily, this river's only crossed by roads four times. This is the third one. Hopefully, we'll only see one more of these stupid things. Uh, so that's where we're at. The day is getting extended a little bit, but maybe that means we can just sleep in in the morning. And um, we're crushing it, man. We're crushing it. It's been a beautiful day. We ain't been rained on all day. I mean, you can't hardly beat that. Caught some fish. I mean, zero complaints. Other than Brett and Chili are getting tired, you know. They're good for about 20 miles a day. Then they start to... They start to peck her on out on me, son. Chili's toting a kayak full of wet gear. So, uh, that's where we're at. We'll be wrapping up day two here soon, Lord willing. We'll see what it looks like around the other side of this road right here. Uh, I prefer not to lay up and listen to this noise of this road all evening, so shouldn't take too long to get out of earshot of it. it not an interstate or anything. Some sort of highway. Hopefully Chili makes it. He's all bent out of shape because he's, uh, all of his gear's wet from flipping his boat over. And he's wanting to dry it out. So. Pretty epic. There's your evening report. Enough said. Well, I just want to show y'all around camp. Night two, we got the old copper spur fully set up. No group tarp tonight. What's up, Brett? 
Brett been battling a migraine all day, man. He didn't he didn't complain a single time through the whole day. He hunkered down. We did 25 and a half miles today. Chili's in here. Chili, what's up, man? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I about can't get this zipper to work. Well, man, you shouldn't have got sand all in it. Back it out and clean it up, man. We got a front porch view of the river right here. I'll show it to you guys in the morning. Hey, make sure you let him know. Chili took another spill before he even got out of the kayak. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he fell in the water again. Oh, he's just, he's had a rough day. Got to get his arm floaty. <laughs> so we're getting hammered with a storm this morning. A bad storm. We've had uh, sustained lightning probably. Uh, 10 plus strikes a minute uh, for probably the last 20 minutes and it, there's one right there it's um it's just not safe to be on the water quite obviously this is an easy decision so uh, we chose to get hunkered down right here and try to wait this thing out uh, Chili and Brett have already taken their shelters down so I have a little bit of a shelter still up here just my my outer shell it's holding up pretty well, but this is pretty sustained winds and a, a rough, rough storm. I've got water coming in the tent right now. Um, so we're going to wait this thing out and until it gets safe to be on the water. As you can see, I'm in the lightning position. It's uh, the lightning drill position. It's in a third world squat um, on my feet, on my heels. I'm minimizing my contact with the ground. Even though I'm under shelter right here, this just offers a, uh, a false sense of protection. All it's doing is keeping the rain off of me, but there's really nothing else that we can do. We're on a pretty isolated sandbar uh, that's surrounded with a swamp, and then we've got the river out front. So we are stuck here uh, until this thing subsides and it's safe for us to move. But that's how our morning is going on the third day of, uh, of this Ultima Hall River mission. <clears throat> it's no joke, man. It's no joke when you're out here and you can't get away from something like this. Um, but that's where we're at. So, just checking in with you guys. Enough said. All right, guys, so we think it's safe to move. We're gonna give her a go. If it gets nasty again, we're just going to stop up with the group tarp and hunker down again. But uh, we got to get some miles in today. We could cover 30 miles a day pretty easily if we didn't mess around. Yesterday was a fishing day. But anyways, here we go, setting off for day three clock has started I think I got all my gear squared away Chili taught us a lesson yesterday make sure you have all essential gear carabinered in or at a minimum make sure it floats that was one of the worst storms I've sat through in the in the backcountry before That joker was nasty. Chili's got his darn rain jacket on. Look at this, guys. How about that? <laughs> Him and Brett set out under a willow tree the whole storm. Kind of odd putting her. I, I guess Chili got a little cold. It's kind of odd putting a rain jacket on uh, when you're already soaking wet. Yep, it's still raining. The river's coming up. Chili's already thinking about the sandbar he's gonna get to sleep on tonight. If there are any sandbars left, if it keeps doing this, it ain't looking good. This baby's rising quick, man. It's probably rose probably three or four feet. Looking at the banks on the left side.
Pretty good sustained heavy rain. Lightning has slacked up quite a bit. Well, what a difference a few hours makes on uh, day three of our trip, of our Altam Altamaha River mission. This morning, man, we were getting just hammered. Pouring rain, lightning. Well, you guys saw it in the video. Um, and now the sun's out and Brett has lost his sunglasses. He dropped them in the water. Uh, which kind of sucks. But I did not expect to be wearing sunglasses today at any point in time based off of what the sky looked like this morning. But it's absolutely beautiful. This is a amazing section of river right through here. We're at 14 and a half miles. Been on the water for five hours and 19 minutes. I think we'll probably call it a day a little early today. Uh, we got to get uh, get some gear dried out. And we also will be coming up on a town called Jessup, which is uh, where the paper mill is. And from what I've heard, the discharge from that paper mill pollutes the water of, of the Ultima Hall pretty bad. So we want to camp up river tonight of the paper mill and then get up early in the morning and put that thing behind us. And uh, we'll cut, we'll, we'll get some coverage on what that looks like when we pass it tomorrow, Lord willing. All right, guys, camp. Day three, night three, I guess. We set up early camp tonight because we were sogged out. I'm talking about completely sogged out. Nice stretch of sand right here on a beautiful section of river. We're just drying out, man. Got a little grass up here today, so at least I'm out of the sand. Chili's in the sand, full sand. He likes that sand better than the ants. Got the hog buster drying out. Pretty much everything laid out because we got hammered with some rain. Day three, done. 17 and a quarter miles. Forgot to stop my timer. What you got there, Chili? I'm the trash man. Chili's the trash man and the dishwasher around here. I like those jobs. I need more jobs like that. <laughs> I can't believe the sun is out. That's it, guys. Folks at home, folks at home, you wouldn't believe how unlikely it seemed this morning that we'd see any sun today. Yeah. Yeah, it was socked in. Catch up with y'all tomorrow or later tonight if something crazy happens, which is a distinct possibility. I don't care how many billions you got. You can't buy this. No. Nope. Sorry. You got to put in the work to get it. Welcome to Saturday morning, Chili. Great morning, man. Great morning. Had some fog this morning. We had a we had a redneck in camp. Well, in the river last night. That uh, was spotlighting for alligator or something, and um, that was about 2 a.m. And he shined us with his spotlight for a good 45 minutes, 30 minutes. And boy, I tell you what, Chili didn't like that. 
all <laughs> fired up. I mean, Chili did not like that, son. Yeah, a word to the wise. If I'm up here camping, don't even get near me. Or you're at risk of getting shot. I mean, that's just about as simple as I can put it. What was it verbatim? I'm going to shoot them in the face. I'm going to blow the head off, son. <laughs> that man ain't messing around, son. You know, when you try, when you kayak, you can bring luxury gear. As you can see, we're about to eat a fine breakfast. Well, I say that as long as it don't start raining. <laughs> Got a big day ahead of us today, boys. It's gonna, it's gonna be good. Welcome to day four. Well, day four actually started last night about 2 a.m. We well into day four. Enough said. All right, on the river, day four. Nice section right here. We'll be coming up on Jessup, I think, here soon. Jessup, Georgia. But this is a beautiful section of river. It's been a great morning. The weather's been perfect. Got stung by a bee. I'd say that's the only thing I could possibly complain about. But I'm not going to because uh, it wasn't all that bad. Chili and Brett are up ahead. I've been hanging back fishing. Just got done recording a podcast with Blake. And uh, we're gonna try to knock down about 25 miles today, so. So here we are at our fourth and final road crossing in Jessup, Georgia, on the Altima Hall. This should be our final road crossing until we get down into coastal waters in Darien. So um, Jessup looks to be a pretty, uh, one of the, well, I guess the largest uh, town that the Altima Hall passes directly through and I'm looking forward to putting this road behind us not much places to camp through this section of river uh, for the last I'm gonna say well over the last five miles leading into Jessup the river's gotten really high and really deep not a lot of sandbars or anything on the on the banks suitable for camping chili tell the people what you're upset about man i'm not upset chili is he's in low spirits right now what's going on man i mean i would tell him something if i was upset why won't you drink your gatorade I don't want a Gatorade. I don't drink Gatorade. Why not? Gatorade's good for you, man. Well, I, if you don't drink it, I'm gonna probably, I'm not gonna throw it away because I ain't gonna litter, but I'm gonna find somewhere to hide it in your boat because I ain't lugging it around. Why the world wouldn't you drink Gatorade, man? Because I don't want it. We can't even do nothing nice for you, I man. I would have Gatorade if I wanted it. Yeah. Brett spent $34 back there. They probably spent about $2 on that Gatorade. I'll pay him back. It's like he bought you that Gatorade and now it's like you're just slapping him in the face, man. How you doing, Brett? I'm a little upset because Chili's taking my blessings away. So Chili's paddling with his paddle upside down. No, I'm paddling with it the way that it's been freaking working for me. How about uh, that? Now Brent's upset because he bought Chili a Gatorade and Chili won't drink it. Well, now I'm upset because Brent's upset. You are you are already upset. No, I wasn't. When Jack. we when we stopped at the boat ramp, you quit trying to act like you know my emotions. Dude. When we stopped at the boat ramp, you got immediately upset. 
how? I, I'm just, I'm just saying what I, what I saw, man. What you think? I mean, he took it all out on your cooler, Chad. Yeah. So we stopped and got resupplied on some ice for the cooler, and uh, that really made Chili mad. See, this is what. All right, guys. Here's the paper mill. We've heard a lot about this paper mill in Jessup. And apparently they discharge a lot of waste into the Altima Hall here. So we're really gonna see if, uh, if we see a change in the river here. We've heard that, uh, that this discharge does impact the river. So we'll see here soon. We'll keep you guys posted. Treated industrial wastewater. Well, it's all good. They got a permit. What? Treated industrial wastewater. They got a permit, though. Yeah, I wonder what it would take to get a permit to dump millions of gallons of wastewater into a river. So the interesting thing we get south of the paper mill so there was a boat ramp just north of the paper mill that had a ton of um, fishermen there with boats we haven't seen a single boat south of the paper mill until now we got one coming around the corner so definitely a lot less activity down here which makes total sense because the smell is horrific. Um, I do still, still see some bait fish present. The water's gotten maybe a little murkier, but hasn't really changed color from that brownish color that we've been seeing uh, along the river for the duration of our mission. That looks like a permanent residence. I believe you could make do with that, Chili. That ain't half bad there. Huh. Nice spot. If you worked at the paper mill, you could just swim right across the river of a morning and... Well, I'd love to just sit there and smell that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I believe if I was going to live on this river like a gypsy, I believe I'd find me a better spot than that. It's literally the worst spot. Oh yeah, I can smell it now too. I mean that is Woo, that's rank. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that's rank. They just sit there and smell that. Gosh. That was, that was Lord have mercy that freaking thing stinks, son. I feel polluted already. I wonder how the water's stinking. Gosh! Oh. That burns your nostrils. I got to get downstream of this song gun. That song gun is rank, son. Yeah, I, I can taste it in the back of my throat. Good gosh, that'll about make you cute. That's the smell coming off of that paper mill, guys, what we're talking about. It's literally so strong, it almost will make you nauseous. And, uh, and it's burning the back of my throat as I breathe it in. So that's some pretty powerful st uh, stink right there. We gotta, we gotta make some way and get out from around that son of a gun. I can't stand a sunny, rainy day. And here we are with some sunny rain. Uh, I'm starting to, to
to understand how this river earned its nickname, the Little Amazon. Because we've gotten into a section here, we're at 18, about 18 and three quarters on day four. And this is some remote jungle looking stuff. The river's tightened up. Uh, it's not near as wide as it was. The flow's picked up. And it's got big timber all along the banks. Pretty epic change of scenery here. Got a big cut bank on the left side. That's not very typical either. You guys can see it. Pretty tight in here, easy paddling. Great current. Came through some sections today just south of Jessup and they didn't give up miles easy, big wide sections. Stop paddling, you just sit still. This has a very unique feel to it. I guess Chili has fell slap out of his bottom end. He's not even in sight right now. I guess we need to wait on him and make sure he didn't flip his boat over again. Last time I saw him, he was trying to pee and he was looking a little shaky, so. Dude, it's day five, man. It's day five. Day five. Before we break down uh, day four camp, I wanted to make sure to give you guys a opportunity to see it. I'm getting ready to head out in the morning. I know it's not tidied up. Chili's about to get on it, uh, tidying all this up. And Chili and I slept under our bug nets, under the group tarp, because mosquitoes are horrific out here. And um, we got our drop to the water down here. Brett's over here on the side, and we found these things last night. Whoo, yeah. We were walking around in here barefoot until we weren't. <laughs> There's camp, day four camp. Today is day five. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've missed quite a bit today on day five because the battery life in a uh, GoPro sucks. So I spent all morning uh, charging the batteries for this thing. Um, so it's day five. We are six and a half miles in, been on the water for an hour and 50 minutes. It's been an amazing section of river today. As usual, uh, a couple of things, the river has changed significantly here yet again it just continues to change man every 10 15 miles there's something different about it that's why it never gets old i could do this for a long long time once we passed uh jessup in the paper mill yesterday something that's crazy uh is now we are 20 miles down river from that mill you can still smell the the chemical smell of the mill. I don't know if it's in the water or if when the, the wind shifts just right that uh, we can smell it on the air. I, I can't quite figure it out, but it's pretty astounding. Um, Chili flipped his boat over again today. Uh, he took a pretty hard spill. He got into some trees on the bank, some fallen trees, blowdowns, and uh, went to reach for a limb capsized he popped up out of the water clinging to his boat sucking wind i think he took down a mouthful of uh of this of this water a lungful probably and uh he ended up getting his boat back right side up he lost both his fishing poles his favorite hat and uh, no telling what else all his gears completely soaked so he's had a rough morning um but man we got some good laughs out of it He has capsized again, ladies and gentlemen. What capsized you? I saw you were in the trees, but how did you go over for real, man? I said I don't know. 
Were you reaching? Were you reaching for something again? No. <laughs> I should have been reaching for my axe. Hey, screw you, all right? So what? You were just... Oh, you were just practicing your dump boat drill. Your boat, your inside of your boat must have been a little muddy like mine. See how muddy my... In Chili was just cleaning out the floor of his boat. Everything on my boat is is functioning well. Gear is good. I've kind of settled in with how I have stuff set up. And um, I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. So we're going to try to hit our 20 miles today. All right, here's y'all's official gear class. Since Brett said people like to know how we have gear set up. I'm gonna go over my boat real quick from front to back and show you how I'm set up. So, on the front, I've got my Hyperlite pack. This has got my, my tent, um, my personal hygiene items, uh, books, journals, all that is inside the pack. These packs are not actually waterproof. We found that out, they're water resistant. Uh, they're made of Dyneema waterproof material, but they have grommets on the bottom somewhere where water can leak in. I've also got a few other just miscellaneous items stuffed in the outside of the pack. As you can see, this is strapped to the bow of the boat, and it's also strapped around with one of these pull-tight nylon webbing straps. Um, I have a bow line here on the front. The rest of the bow line's tucked up under the uh, the bag. I usually hang my wet clothes on this pack to dry out during the day. Right behind that is a dry bag with food in it, which is carabinered to my Hyperlite pack through that loop right there on the bottom. Then I got my tackle box, which is carabinered to the food bag. So all this is secure if the boat was to flip over. We're good to go. You need to have stuff in your boat secured to the boat or you will lose it if you capsize like Chili does every other day. Cup holder, GoPro mount. They have to be toward the front of the boat or else you're gonna snag them on your paddle. That's why they're up there. My seat, it goes up and down and I have storage underneath the seat. Talked about this earlier, this is from Granite Gear. It's actually made for a canoe seat, but it fits perfect on the bottom of this Jackson kayak. In there, I have all of my kind of essential items that I wanna access throughout the day. Med kit, 550 cord, snacks, cell phone, water filter, um, just little stuff that I wanna get to throughout the day. That's a really great piece of kit right there. Got a little bit of food there under the seat. I just took that out a minute ago. A couple bottles of water. Over here, I just have random stuff stuffed down in these little side pockets. Paddle mounted on the side. I've got a tackle box there, tackle box there. Butt pad, which also helps my lower back. It's just a cut piece of uh, eggshell ground pad. Back here, I've got a 10 liter bladder full of fresh water that doesn't need to be filtered. Rain pants. Um, cooler behind that back here I've got my ground pad uh, sleeping bag and pillow so kind of my sleep system here carabinered into this bungee and right underneath that I've got the grate that we cook on over the fire with a uh, cast iron skillet there inside that same bag so from front to back that's what is in my boat Day five, 15 miles. 15 miles into the day. I would say the river has fully recovered. I can no longer smell the stench of the paper mill. The waters are back to normal. Seems the beauty of this place has fully returned. Chili has
has went full Vietnamese out here. He's headed to work his rice paddy. He's been sitting on that straw hat with a dirty butt for six days. And just this morning, he decided to dawn it back on his head. <laughs> Camp on day five. Chili getting ready to dry some stuff off. Really don't get no better than this. Got a nice front porch right here. Got a little shade. What you got to say for yourself today, Chili? Well, day five ain't done yet. We still gotta eat and make it through all this this craziness, man. But uh, today was an interesting day. I fell in the river again, lost my favorite hat, lost two fishing poles. I, uh, I'm i really upset that I lost that hat. You know, I'm not a big materials guy, but that hat meant something to me. Mm -hmm. So that's tough. And I'm also upset with myself for falling in again like I've freaking idiot that's what i gotta say for myself today at other least, than that good day at least you still got that neck knife man if i don't get to kill something with that hog buster <laughs> this is gonna have some blood on it by the end of this i see it that's 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 what tilly has to say let's see what brett's got to say about today brett how was how was day five for you man oh you know just another easy day um there was a couple of couple of little places in the river where it was a little hard to paddle but other than that we we cruised for the most of the day got a good laugh early on so that made everything pretty good on chili's the laugh was on chili's behalf yeah he provides a lot of those the river is has taken something personally for me and chili my sunglasses i lost yesterday meant a lot chili's hat meant a lot mm-hmm so, we're just waiting on Chad and his little sob story when he flips or dumps. Well, you guys know the old bull. The old bull has a lot of respect for this Altima Hall River. So, uh, we were talking about earlier how she, she requires a sacrifice from all who choose to paddle the length of her waters. Um, but... I feel like we have a mutual respect for each other. So I'm not sure what she'll, if anything, what she'll require from me. But hey, we got a long ways to go and we're probably gonna, it's gonna get interesting as we start nearing the coast tomorrow. What is this, day six? Day six. I feel like we've done this before. What, done day six? No, just pulled our boats off of some secluded sandy beach into the water to the Altima Hall River. And... Embarking to some place that we've never seen. Not knowing what's around each bend. Yeah. Dang, is it Monday? So we're getting into some more coastal waters here. We're just uh, about two miles south of the Altamaha River Park that you guys just saw. Uh, the water's brackish here. May have already said that, but it's wide. We've got decent flow, and uh, it's changing quite a bit on the banks. A lot of tall coastal grasses. I think this is just the beginning of 
the change that we're gonna see as we continue to near the Atlantic Ocean. Chili's pretty excited. He loved the, uh, the little store there at the park, even though he didn't buy anything. He just said nothing struck him. So uh, sometimes you don't get struck. I got struck by a cinnamon roll. Struck me hard, son. Brett, what'd you get struck by? Twix. Brett got struck by Twix and a pair of uh, Vortex sunglasses. Chili's just living that Vietnamese life. Chili is is really thinking hard about Mud Cat Charlie's, which is a restaurant on the edge of the river, apparently uh, about 16 miles from our current location. Chili's a kind of a connoisseur of um, fine dining. If y'all haven't traveled with Trilly before, you don't understand. He's a connoisseur of fine dining. He, he doesn't research anything except for the good places to eat. That's all he's concerned about. Don't go off of those reviews. Yeah, and he don't go off reviews. Of what do you go off of, Chili? But I look up every restaurant within the location and I go through their websites and menus to decide what's best. And if I have a good roll? No. Well, for all you aspiring kayak campers out there, <laughs> this is what happens when you get toward the coast and uh, the tide starts coming in and you need to go out. Yeah. It just, it don't work. So we're tied off to a stump. We're gonna eat a little lunch. I think we got about two hours, two hours or so till the tide is all the way in. I knew this was gonna happen. This ain't no surprise. All right, so since uh, I just did a review on my Leopold sunglasses, Brett's going to do a review on his Vertex that he got from the Altamaha River Park. Now you got these, 30 seconds, Brett. These Vortexes got this satin black finish on them, real nice plastic. You got one stainless steel screw on each side, plastic lenses, really good blow with it. Um, they fog up very easy. The nose pads are very irritable. But other than that, man, for $20, this is a gift. Hold They're on, going... weren't they 18 They might have been $18.99. 20 with tax, yeah. okay. So, it, so you satisfied this, then? These, this is a go-getter product right, right here. So y'all heard, heard it. Switch from, throw your Leopold glasses in the trash because they're going to fail and get you some Vertex from the Altamaha River Camp. <laughs> The final road crossing that we know of. Look at all these stupid people in their cars. They could be on kayaks. All right, here we are at camp, night six. We, uh, we were running out of time. The tide is about to slack up and start coming back in again. And so we found some dike right here where they control water flow into this big wetland marsh. And this is what we got, man, because everything that we've been paddling by is nothing but grass marsh. No high ground other than this dike. So our dang boats are down here in this mud hole. I'm gonna tell you right now, you step down there, you knee deep in in marsh mud. So we're gonna set up right here on this road right here, and we're gonna wait for uh, we're gonna look at the tide chart. 
see what happens tomorrow morning. Nighttime nav to the coast, son. Two thirty AM start time. We had to catch the tide this morning. The night sky is beautiful. Chili's leading us out. We're headed to the coast, guys. I know the phone never does the night sky justice, but so beautiful tonight. We're blessed to be out here. It's morning. So we're going to get after it. You know these waters were pirate infested waters, right? Yeah, that's what that lady said. Blackbeard Island's right around the corner. Dang, man. Man, those are good ones right there, buddy. They are everywhere, ain't they? This is living right here, son. <laughs> Bunch of savages out here. Went from a river rat to a beach bum. Bismarck has made landfall. You got us here though. Yeah. You couldn't get here if you didn't paddle. No, you couldn't. So there you go. Lord, there's chili in his underwear. Huh. Good Lord, there's Brett. He ain't shaved in seven days. Good Lord, there's three kayaks in a ditch. Well, this is the culmination of uh, two years worth of wanting to do this mission. This is the end of 137 miles on the Altamaha River 
all the way from the headwaters to the mouth of the river. It's just absolutely amazing to be here, to have this adventure with uh, great people, and uh, to be here safe. We got to see so much of God's creation. And uh, man, I'm just at a loss for words. If there's something you got that you want to do, if there's an adventure that you want to have, man, get after it. Because this is how you feel alive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's our ride. There's our ride. There's the lady that inspired this whole trip, Miss Emmy. <laughs> 